Alrighty gang, so this is the um, uh, second part of the presentation on chapter 9. Um, we're going to start by talking about um, breastfeeding. Um, I'm going to come back to this slide in a little bit, um, but I want to first give some kind of introductory um, information about breastfeeding. Um, and first and foremost, just um, articulate that breastfeeding is a very personal decision for um, the woman. Um, and I think it's very important to take a non judgmental approach um, to each individual woman um, in terms of uh, what their decision is whether to breastfeed or to um, bottle feed. Um, there are many documented um, advantages to breastfeeding. Um, for one, breast milk contains the full range of nutrients that the infant needs in the right proportion. There's no commercial formula that can simulate what the infant can get through uh, breast milk. Also, um, breast milk is very easily digested. Um, and this is particularly important for the um, infant's um, new um, uh, maturing digestive system. When we talk uh, about uh, breast milk uh, versus formula milk, we'll talk about um, uh, the fact that breastfeeding is typically done more frequently because the breast milk is so much more easily digested than formula uh, milk. Um, breast milk does not cause infant allergies. Um, it does um, also provide the infant with a full range of um, maternal antibodies. Um, so it gives the infant um, a, a essential jump start um, in terms of immunity. Um, colostrum, which is the first milk that the infant gets during the first couple of days, um, is incredibly rich in those antibodies. Um, breast milk promotes the elimination of meconium, um, and breastfed um, infants are rarely constipated. Um, it's convenient and it's economical. Um, the suckling uh, promotes mouth development, um, and um, breastfeeding obviously eliminates the risk of um, exposure to contaminated water supply uh, compared to um, mixing up formula. Um, the suckling of the infant also promotes the return of the uterus to the pre-pregnant state, the involution that we've talked about. Um, and um, breastfeeding can play um, or may play um, an important role in the development of um, the um, infant brain. Um, also, breastfeeding in terms of um, uh, the uh, maternal side does help the mother um, lose weight and return more quickly to her pre-pregnancy weight. Um, and it also helps promote mother-infant um, bonding. Um, and it has been implicated in um, decreased occurrence of respiratory uh, diseases and illnesses in children. Um, there are um, some contraindications to breastfeeding. Uh, for example, certain medications um, are, um, if the woman is on certain medications, um, uh, breastfeeding is contraindicated. Those include um, cancer drugs, anti-metabolites, um, and chloral, um, chloramphenicol. Um, a condition called galactosemia is also a contraindication for breastfeeding. Um, women who have um, untreated active TB, um, HIV, or an active um, herpes infection um, should not, um, or excuse me, an active herpes zoster infection should not breastfeed. Um, and women who abuse drugs and alcohol should not um, breastfeed um, because of the um, transmission through the breast milk. Um, let's talk a little bit about um, how, what's the physiology of lactation. Um, there are two primary hormones that are at play, prolactin, um, which is released by the anterior pituitary gland, and it actually causes the production of milk. Um, this um, happens during pregnancy, however, there are, um, um, or excuse me, prolactin is secreted during pregnancy, but there are hormones that are secreted from the placenta that prevent the um, uh, breast tissue or prevent the formation of milk um, initially during pregnancy. Oxytocin is released from the posterior pituitary gland, and it actually enables the milk to get um, uh, delivered from the alveoli to the nipple. Um, and it is what um, 
and that's what's called the letdown reflex or the milk ejection. Um, sometimes a woman might feel um, some tingling um, in her breasts when this occurs or even some cramping in her uterus when this occurs. Um, the um, infant sucking on the breast um, stimulates the release of oxytocin um, uh, so that milk is delivered um, and um, there and the um, more frequently the um, uh, infant nurses, um, the um, more um, milk um, gets produced. Um, so if um, the mother, say for example, has twins and needs to try to nurse twins successfully, well she can do that because the infant suckling on the breast stimulates the um, continued production of milk. If, say, for example, um, she um, length lengthens the time between nursing um, uh, her infant, um, that will um, cause a decrease in her milk production. So it's largely a supply and demand issue. Um, there are um, three phases of um, milk uh, production. Um, the colostrum, um, which like, we, like I mentioned is produced during the first um, few days of milk production, and it is incredibly um, vitamin and protein um, and antibody rich um, and it also has a laxative effect so it helps the infant expel um, the meconium. Um, the transitional milk um, um, occurs um, it, in production about seven to ten days after birth um, and um, it essentially is a transition time from production of colostrum to mature milk. And mature milk is usually secreted after a couple of weeks and um, it is um, uh, what is present then throughout the rest of the um, nursing. Um, there's the composition of milk. Um, the four milk is um, the first milk that the infant at obtains during a particular um, nursing session, and um, it is more watery and it essentially clenches, clench quenches the infant's um, thirst. And then the hind milk is the milk that comes later in that particular feeding and it is higher in fat and it helps to really satisfy um, the infant's hunger. Therefore it's interesting to consider that the longer the infant nurses, um, the more of the hind milk that he or she will get. Um, therefore you want to try um, to eliminate really short um, feedings because um, if um, uh, a uh, feeding is cut short, um, the infant may only receive the fore milk and may miss out on the hind milk, which is um, really um, uh, fat rich and helps to satisfy the hunger. So I talked um, a lot about um, the advantages of breastfeeding already. Um, one important piece um, is the um, galactagogues. Um, mothers from um, many col cultures use these. Um, they're um, breast milk stimulators um, and it's just important I think for nurses to be aware of this. Um, they can include um, beer, brewer's yeast, rice, gruel, um, um, uh, fenugreek tea and sesame tea um, and, and these are commonly used postpartum as um, uh, breast milk stimulators. Garlic is also sometimes um, um, eaten by the mother to prevent newborn illness um, and this will also flavor her um, breast milk. It's not harmful at all to the newborn. It's just important to be aware and to respect uh, cultural practices. Um, so the next um, uh, item that we're going to talk about are uh, positions for breastfeeding. Um, there are a variety of different um, positions that you can see here in this slide. Um, uh, you know, a couple of things just to consider when you're thinking about the different positions is, one, the infant's body should be chest to chest with the mother um, with the head and neck in alignment. And you can see that is holds true with all of these positions. Um, the um, uh, inf infant's um, uh, um, position needs to facilitate um, him or her being able to um, uh, grasp onto the breast um, and um, uh, swallow without difficulty. Um, it's important um, not to um, um, put the um, infant um, uh, above the level of the nipple because you want to let gravity work with the infant. Um, and then holding um, the infant below the level of the nipple can exert some pressure on the nipple, which could cause soreness and bruising. Um, 
and it's important to um, um, center the, um, the, the nipple to the nose of the infant with the nipple aimed at the roof of the infant's mouth um, so that the lower part of the jaw attaches first um, and um, uh, a um, effective um, latch on will occur um, if um, the infant's mouth is wide open uh, before the, the latch on occurs. Um, so now we'll talk about some breastfeeding techniques. Um, here is um, uh, kind of a step-by-step uh, uh, -step, um, uh, depiction of the latch-on. And you can actually see that the infant um, has um, uh, most of the areola in um, uh, his or her mouth um, and the nipple is um, facing up to the roof of the mouth and um, uh, actually is inserted deep into the mouth. Um, and, um, you know, it is important that the um, infant learn the um, latch-on technique. Um, the mother can hold um, the breast so that the nipple brushes against the infant's lower lip, and a hungry infant will typically um, seek out um, that um, breast by opening his mouth wide, and then the mother can bring the infant close um, so that <clears throat> the areola is well within the mouth of the infant, and then the lips will um, flare outward, um, and the tongue um, should be under the nipple, um, and that can be assessed um, by gently pulling down on the lower lip. Um, if the infant needs to be removed from the breast for some reason, um, uh, the mother can um, slip one finger um, into the infant's mouth and essentially break um, the, the seal. <clears throat> Evaluating the intake. Sometimes women get nervous that um, their baby's not getting enough um, um, breast milk or, and they're not sure how much breast milk the baby's getting whenever the um, <clears throat> baby is nursing. Um, but a couple of things to think about. Um, the letdown reflex should occur, um, and so that should let the mother know that milk is being produced and is being transferred from the um, alveoli to the nipple. Um, this will be um, indicati indicated by a tingling sensation um, in the nipple, <clears throat> and, you may, and the woman may actually have um, milk dri dripping from the nipple. <clears throat> Um, the infant ideally should nurse for about 15 minutes per breast and early on um, should um, nurse about 8 to 10 times per day. Um, and remember the importance of the, the length of the nursing session so that um, the infant gets both the fore milk and the hind milk. Um, you typically will hear an audible swallowing sound. Um, the infant will be more relaxed after feeding and sometimes fall right asleep. You can also evaluate their intake by looking at their um, wet diapers. They should have six to eight wet diapers a day and they should pass several stools per day. Um, and um, the mother's breast should feel soft after the feeding um, as um, it is no longer full of milk. Um, so let's look now at um, preventing problems. Hmm. Um, <clears throat> we talked already a little bit about frequency and duration. So remembering the importance of nursing each breast for about 10 to 15 minutes um, and, er and early on in infancy about 8 to 10 times a day. Um, if the infant is um, overly sleepy, the recommendation is that if um, the infant hasn't nursed in um, uh, three hours or more, that um, he should be um, uh, aroused and um, uh, attempts should be made uh, to feed um, him or her. Um, if the infant is um, um, uh, fussy, um, uh, oftentimes um, feeding can be a uh, way to soothe the infant. Um, the infant can be um, wrapped or swaddled or held close um, to try to calm um, the infant um, if um, he's not um, soothed by um, the feeding. Um, if a woman has flat or inverted nipples, um, they can be um, uh, made to be erect by um, rubbing them gently or rolling them gently between the thumb and the forefinger. 
Um, supplemental feedings. It's not typically recommended that the um, um, baby is fed either uh, water by bottle or formula by bottle if um, the um, uh, mother is breastfeeding. And the reason for this is that typically the um, fluids um, come out much more easily um, from a bottle and um, the infant may um, develop a preference for the bottle um, because it um, is easier to extract the contents of the bottle um, and that can lead to something called nipple confusion um, and um, typically once lactation is firmly established if um, um, the um, uh, infant needs something for soothing purposes, a pacifier can be used, but typically it's recommended after lactation has been firmly established. We talked about breast engorgement earlier, um, but just remembering that early, regular, frequent nursing is going to help prevent breast engorgement. Um, and um, sometimes between um, feedings, cold packs can be used to help reduce discomfort. Um, and um, um, always making sure that the uh, woman is wearing a um, uh, supportive um, bra. Um, Nipple trauma can be um, a, a significant issue, and as we've mentioned before, it can lead to um, uh, entrance of microorganisms and then therefore to mastitis. Um, the recommendation is that um, soap and water are not used to clean off the nipples. Um, um, uh, if um, um, uh, anything is put on the nipples in terms of care for cracks, um, the recommendation is actually to use breast milk and not any sort of ointments or tinctures um, as these don't tend to be effective. Um, multiple births, um, I mentioned earlier that it is possible to um, successfully nurse twins and largely because of the physiology of um, milk production. It's, um, milk is produced by based on supply and demand, so the increased amount of suckling, the um, increase um, the, uh, in milk production. Um, if a baby is born premature, that baby can still receive breast milk, and particularly for a premature infant, um, uh, getting the um, antibodies and the nutrients from breast milk would be um, uh, um, of high importance. Um, uh, if this premature infant is being gavage fed or tube fed, the mother can pump her milk and um, then um, um, uh, the infant can receive um, the breast milk via gavage. If for some reason um, the feedings um, for an infant need to be delayed, um, for example, let's say mother goes back to work but she still wants to continue to breastfeed exclusively the baby, um, the mother can use a breast pump um, and um, this um, milk can be stored um, either in refrigerator or freezer and we'll talk specifically about that um, in the upcoming slides. Um, so milk at um, room temperature um, is not recommended to stay um, more than four hours because of possible bacterial contamination. Um, it can be stored in the refrigerator for 24 hours or in the freezer for up to three months. It is not recommended that you microwave breast milk when you're thawing it because it can destroy some of the um, immunological factors. Um, so if you're getting it out of the freezer, um, you can um, uh, run it under some uh, warm water um, or it can be thawed in the refrigerator um, for 24 hours prior to using. Maternal nutrition. Um, remember, just like with pregnancy, mom is not actually needing to eat for two. Um, but it is important to note that a um, breastfeeding mother does need an additional 500 calories over the non-pregnant diet. Um, she should also um, focus on getting adequate um, fluids, primarily water, 8 to 10 glasses a day. Um, and remember that so certain foods eaten by the mother um, can um, uh, alter the taste of the milk or cause um, the infant to develop gas. Um, additionally, um, if the mother is on any medications um, or needs any um, periodic uh, medications, it is um, crucial to consider that she is breastfeeding because certain medications um, are secreted in the breast milk and are not safe for breastfeeding infants. 
weaning. Um, it, it probably makes sense that gradual we weaning is preferred um, both for the infant and for the mother. Um, there's no necessary best time. It's going to depend from situation to situation. Um, if um, the uh, uh, infant stops nursing cold turkey, um, the mother will likely um, uh, develop um, breast engorgement for a, a brief period of time, um, and so therefore um, the weaning is preferred uh, for her comfort. And um, uh, um, also in terms of uh, work transitioning the infant from um, the breast milk to whatever the next food item is going to be. So the technique of weaning includes eliminating one feeding at a time um, and, um, you know, typically choosing the uh, feeding that the infant is least interested in, um, usually a daytime feeding, um, and then eliminate that favorite feeding last, and that's often one at bedtime or in the night. Um, the infant still might need comfort nursing if tired or ill, and you, you don't want to recommend to the woman to breast pump during this time because that's just going to help increase her milk supply. And what you want to do is slowly extend the time frame between each feeding so that the um, milk supply will respond to that. Um, formula feeding. Um, most or many um, formulas are um, cow milks, cow's milk based. Um, there are soy-based formulas as well for um, infants that can't tolerate the cow milks based. Um, there are ready-to-use formulas, meaning formulas that already come um, uh, reconstituted. There are concentrated liquid types of formulas that just need um, additional water added to them, and then there are powdered formulas. Um, regardless of the type, it's really important to follow the manufacturer's instructions for both preparation and for storage of the products. Um, and, and really speaking to, that, to this point, over dilution or under dilution of a concentrated liquid or powder can result in illness to the infant. So um, how does feeding an infant with formula vary from um, uh, breastfeeding? Well, like I mentioned before, uh, the breast milk is very easily digested by the maturing um, infant's um, stomach, whereas um, the uh, formula um, milk um, takes um, uh, quite a bit longer uh, to be digested. So typically, um, the formula-fed infant will be fed every three to four hours, um, as opposed to um, every two to three hours with um, the breast-fed um, uh, baby. You don't want to microwave a formula, um, and you don't want to um, give the infant a uh, bottle and uh, prop him or her up with it. Um, one, it can um, lead to um, uh, dental um, cavities uh, once the teeth are developed, and it can also potentially lead to um, respiratory issues um, if the uh, infant were to aspirate. Um, and this is a really valuable time to include um, your partner or the, 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 the mother's partner or a family member. Um, this is a time in which um, other um, uh, members of the family can bond with the infant. So um, discharge planning. Um, Making sure that um, the mother is sent home with ample written materials because it's going to be hard for her to remember all of this information. Um, this is such um, an amazing, overwhelming time and um, verbal instructions um, are going to go in one ear and likely out the other. So making sure that mom and baby have um, all of the pertinent information in written form as well. This should include the following, follow-up appointments, hygiene, um, when to begin sexual intercourse or when it's safe to begin, diet, exercise, danger signs to watch out for and report, newborn follow-up care, um, infant safety seats um, and rules, um, and reassure the mother that the hospital staff is available by telephone if she should have any questions. Usually in terms of follow-up care, um, women um, are seen at a two-week appointment and then a six-week appointment, and it's really important that she um, keep these follow-up appointments. Um, one, um, because during these appointments, the involution of the uterus is assessed. Um, uh, 
to um, the uh, perineum and any incisions, um, episiotomies or laceration repairs, or if it was a C-section, that incision is assessed. Um, and um, also at the six-week um, appointment, um, the provider can get an overall sense of the uh, woman's um, uh, recuperation and how she is coping and, and adapting to um, this uh, life change. Um, and also this will be a good opportunity for the woman to discuss how, with, with the provider any issues that she might have um, that have come up. Um, in terms of hygiene, um, you know, obviously daily showering um, is very important, particularly as we focus on the perineal care. Um, I talked about using the peri bottle um, uh, in a previous uh, presentation. Um, in terms of sexual intercourse, um, once the episiotomy, episiotomy is healed and lochia has stopped, um, it, um, it typically is okay to resume intercourse. Um, that could be anywhere three to six weeks. Um, it is important to stress to the patient that if um, she has intercourse um, sooner than, than that time frame, um, that um, it can put her at risk for possible infection, particularly if the episiotomy has not healed. Um, and like I mentioned previously, um, she may need um, a, a lubricant um, early on um, because of the lack of lubrication um, uh, in the vagina. Um, and um, remember that, um, that uh, ovulation can occur even if the mom is breastfeeding, and that really needs to be stressed. Um, and um, if if they are planning to begin um, sexual relations prior to the six-week follow-up, you need to have the discussion with them in the hospital setting about what they plan to do for contraception. Um, diet and exercise, important to follow a well-balanced diet using the My Pyramid. Um, uh, exercise, um, particularly important. Um, moderate in terms of intensity um, can be helpful um, for weight loss and um, also um, for um, recovery. Um, danger signs um, include the following fever, um, if lochia rubra um, uh, persists or there's lochia that has a foul smelling odor to it, if the mother passes bright red blood, um, particularly if the lochia has changed into the either the serosa or the alba form, um, prolong after pains, abdominal pain or back pain, um, signs of UTI, pain with urination, dysuria, burning, uh, urinary frequency, urinary urgency. Um, Pain, redness, tenderness in the calf, um, and we'll talk about uh, uh, DVTs in the next presentation. Um, any uh, discharge pain, um, tenderness from the suture line, whether it's a perineal laceration or a cesarean. Um, depression also needs to be um, um, assessed for and reported um, if it occurs. Um, and um, in terms of newborn um, follow-up care, um, it's important that um, the um, family have a uh, plan for um, newborn care and uh, beginning well baby checks um, and um, to help them get set up with a pediatrician if they don't already have one. Um, before discharge, um, the family should be taught about in infant safety seats. Um, until the infant is 22 pounds, it will be a, in a rear-facing seat. Um, and I should say it's 22 pounds and one year of age um, for a rear-facing seat. And I know that when we left the hospital with our newborn that we had to bring the car seat up and show them that we could um, strap our little um, newborn in the car seat um, safely and successfully before they would let us leave the hospital. Um, so um, final question for review, what are the, nurse, the essential nursing assessments of the new postpartum mother? So that's a little food for thought for you guys. And that ends this presentation. This is part two of chapter nine. If you guys have any questions, you can um, always send me an email.